Hi guys, Keith from Let's Chris Audio Visual. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're gonna show you how to use your Control 4 Smart Home. So, so we'll start off with how to use your Control 4 touchscreens, how to use the on-screen menu on your TVs, how to use the Control 4 remote controls, and I hope you enjoy it. So this is how we play music in Control 4. So for instance, if we want to listen to music, we'll go to radio, we'll browse our region, which is obviously London, where we are. We hit local radio, and it gives us a list of all the radio stations that are available to us. So for instance, if I want to add Play Capital Extra, it will start playing Capital Extra now in the room. So if you want to now add this radio station to your favorites, you simply tap up here, Add to favorites and then what that'll mean is when you hit my favorites so that's still within the tuning in radio part you can see that the last one we added was capital radio alternatively if you want to make it even quicker to access if you press and hold it we can favor it to the room so now if i press the home button in the top left hand corner we can see Capital Radio or Capital Extra is here. If I tap Capital Extra now, what that means is it will play Capital Extra straight away within the room. Adding volume control is simple by sliding up and sliding down. But say you wanna add that now to another room, simply press the house button with the plus symbol and then select the room that you'd like to play it in. What that now has done is group both rooms together so they both play the same sound. The top slider up here does group volume control. So as I raise it up, it'll raise them both up. As I raise it down, it'll raise them both down. And you can independently also slide them up, slide them down. If you want to get rid of the other rooms because you're not using those other rooms, simply tap the symbol there and it just shows you the rooms that are active. Now, if I want to turn both of the rooms off, so I've had enough listening to that music, I simply tap up here and then go tick tick and both rooms are now off so say you don't want that radio station to appear on your room page simply press and hold the room arrange and remove the favorites so what that means is i can remove that physically from the page i can also rearrange my layout of how i want my control for icons to be to make it nice and simple to use once you're done, hit the tick button in the corner. It's now saved them in those positions. So in your living room space, say there's always a video device that you'd like to have on your front screen. Same principle as before, where we tap the watch. If we press and hold, for instance, Apple TV, favorite to room, it's now appeared on our front screen. So what that means is we no longer have to go to watch then select the device. We literally can now just tap the device and what that will do, it will turn the TV on and go straight to Apple TV in the room. You've had your Control 4 system, it's been set to scenes, but you want to tweak those scenes. So now I'm going to show you how to edit your scenes. Simply select Lighting, select Scenes, and then if we hit the pencil symbol in that right hand corner, we can go to, for instance, in our showroom, all on showroom, and then we can adjust the lights how we'd like them turn the pendant off and then when you press the eye symbol it will show you in the room what that would look like to make sure you're happy if you're not happy just simply adjust it again how you'd like it tap the eye symbol and that will show you exactly what you're trying to achieve once you're happy hit next this is which rooms would you like to see it in this is only in our showroom so basically your living room space you hit done and that's now been saved Say you want to find out what scene's on in the room. Again, we've got the circle symbol in the bottom. If we just tap that, it shows us which scenes are on in the room. Again, with Control 4's new interface, they've allowed for favorites. So if I do press and hold on all on showroom, we can favorite the room to our home page. So basically, if we tap here, it's now appeared on our front screen. So we don't have to sit there and go to lighting, go to scenes, then press that button. So if I turn off, it turns off every, everything off in the room. And you can see that the light symbol has gone off. 
If I tap that now, all the lights in the room have now come on. So it's nice and simple. I want to show you how to access your cameras from the control for touchscreen or whatever I do on the touchscreen you can do on your mobile app. So if you tap security, you have your cameras and our locks and sensors that will typically be either a door lock or a gate. If I tap here, it's gone straight to our touchscreen of our video chime doorbell at the front. So you can see the camera straight away. So now I'm going to show you how to answer your video doorbell when someone's at your door. You literally tap the green button and say, hello, Adam. If you'd like to talk between your touch screens in your home, because it's not on our screen, we'll just tap intercom. And if we call the office touch screen. So now you can see and talk to your loved ones. You can even make it do auto answer on that landing touch screen if you like. And that's a setting within your touch screen. So if you want to set up that landing touch screen to auto answer for those scenarios, you simply go to your intercom, tap the three dots in the top right hand corner, go to preferences, and then hit auto answer. So that whenever the physical touch screen that you're trying to call, you want it to auto answer, comes from an intercom call, you can literally tap that and then when you dial that touchscreen, it will automatically answer straight away. If you do use this feature, we would recommend that you turn it off from your intercom call group. So when, if someone's at your front gate or at your front door, because what will happen is when you push the doorbell, that touchscreen will automatically answer straight away. So it won't give a chance for you to physically answer the door. In addition, you've also got do not disturb. So any calls that come through to a certain touchscreen, you can put on do not disturb, so that'll be blocked from the call list so that won't be able to receive a call should someone push the video door chime or the front gate doorbell so that'll stop straight away another important driver that we find is the add music driver what that means is a certain video source isn't available that hasn't been put in your control for system with that driver we can then add that to the control for system so add new Spotify Connect, call it new for now, for example. Hit that button there. Add the driver to the project, you tap yes. Now if we hit the home button, hit listen. Our new Spotify Connect driver is now here. So if something's not been added with the add music driver, we can add it. You have Amazon Music, so if you have a Prime account, simply add Amazon Music and get access to all of that. Um, if you use the Amazon Music Unlimited service, that's a paid for feature, but just the general music of it is free. Deezer if you have a Deezer account, Napster if you have a Napster account. Sharebridge is what we use or for Apple Airplay. So adding that to your home will give you the feature of being able to airplay music from your phone onto the Control for Smart Home system. Obviously it's Apple devices only. And then we've got Spotify, Tidal and TuneIn Radio. If you've got one feature of TuneIn Radio, just keep the single one because it will be independent streams anyway for each room. So now you know how to use a Control 4 touchscreen in your home. In next week, in part two, we'll be showing you how to use a Control 4 interface on the TV. If you do have any questions, please comment below and we'll be happy to assist in those questions. And also, please like and subscribe and we we'll hope to see you on the next one.